This is the view from my window. Classic picture postcard stuff. Capital city. It makes me angry to see what they've done with it. In a timid gesture to preserve the view of St. Paul's, we get a dismembered dome on a base of spec-built offices. So much for sensitive low-rise development. I always think if someone had had the nerve to turn all those buildings on their side and make a decent tower. This is a tower. And no one could call Trellick Tower a timid building. Trellick Tower is bold because it confronts issues about living in the modern city. It's a building with strong ideas and determined to hold its own. You can tell that it won't be compromised. architect, Erno Goldfinger, was a committed modernist. He understood the city. He understood that the infrastructure of roads and rail are as much a part of the city as its people. He understood its density. And he built an urban building. response to the city, to rise above the pollution and noise and to free more of the available land for open space, for parks and pedestrians. This is the point that you always seem to get interrupted by, yeah, but what about people with kids? Well, I understand that the British are firmly rooted to the earth and can entertain the notion that children need a garden. Well, why can't you have roots in the sky? I grew up on the 23rd floor of a New York apartment building, and okay, so I didn't watch too many flowers grow, but I used to see the Queen Mary come into port. Is my understanding of the universe any less for the experience? The primary Corbusian justification for high-rise living, to provide sun, space, and greenery, is handled both monumentally and sensitively. The lift tower is detached from the building, but connected by bridges at every third floor and crowned by the boiler room. This physically isolates the noisy services, like lift, heating, and rubbish collection, from the flats. But it's definitely very dramatic. At one point, you're enclosed in a stainless steel box and a concrete shaft, and then the next moment, you virtually explode into the natural light of the corridors and bridges. Flats are more like houses in the air. You come off the high-rise street into a spacious hall with stairs. No sight of a corridor, which you might have expected. You immediately notice the light flooding in from both sides of the flat. It really is remarkably bright. This is partly because we're so high up, and also because of Goldfinger's inspired plan. Light switch is incorporated into the steel door frame, mark of a man who obviously loved design. And again, that view. We're on the 21st floor now, and the scale becomes more intimate. You feel closer to people in the streets. But unlike a ground level house, there's no need for curtains. They can't see you. Well, no Queen Mary, but we do have the Royal Horse Artillery. Look at this almost rustic feature. You can open the top of the stable doors in the kitchen, watch the children playing on the balcony at the same time you're cooking dinner. I'm sure some parents are gasping in horror at the thought of it. One thing Goldfinger didn't want to see on the balconies was washing. He was a modernist, after all. And to preempt this insult, three laundrettes were located in the lift tower. 
These were some of a range of communal facilities offered on the site. Others included a club room, nursery school, and a doctor's surgery. This used to be a laundrette. Laundrettes, for instance, make good community centers, places to chat while you wait for a dryer. I remember coming here years ago to a going away party given by some friends who lived in the flats. There were oysters and champagne lying on crushed ice in the dryers. Never would have happened to Doc Cotton's. The place has been closed for some years now. They had problems with vandals. Trellick Tower has not been immune from problems. You can choose your villain, the architect, the people who live here, the management. But I think it's a problem of interpretation. The tower block has become the metaphor for the ills of modern society and the hazards of urban living. It's too easy to put in some ominous clouds to paint shadows on every landing. And yet the same idea, the tower block, can be portrayed romantically. But I think that the real threat has been an inability to accept urbanism. You have to be bold and believe to make it work. From here, on one of the pulpit balconies, I can appropriate a bit of the city. And yet, as an individual, I know I'm part of something much larger. I can celebrate the mass of humanity, even in concrete. living in the city. It's a difficult leap from an individual, one, to be one in ten million. It's all about finding one's place. I think Trellick Tower is a great building because it has a clear idea of its place in the city, its roots, and a vision of how we might live there. Then it's up to us as individuals. It's not an easy building, but then who says architecture should be easy? Mm -hmm.